Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Tracy, in the summer of 2005, Peter Gron had just graduated from high school and was having a ball on a hot summer day at the lake with his friends. Now, Peter was planning to head to college that fall to play basketball and major in biology. Those plans, unfortunately, changed in an instant. A tragic accident that day at the lake would change Peter's life forever. Now here to share his personal story, how his accident inspired him to pursue a, to pursue a career in research, is Dr. Peter Gron. Welcome to the program, Dr. Gron. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, thank you both for uh, inviting me here. I'm very excited to share my story. Yeah, so Dr. Gron, you had just graduated from high school. You Correct. were you were going to go to college. Where were you headed? I was headed to um, uh, Minnesota State University in Moorhead. And you were going to play basketball. And yeah, I was going to walk on and uh, probably redshirt my freshman year and then pursue a degree in biology with the hope to go on to physical therapy school. And you had obviously just graduated, so it was time for a little celebration. Yeah, I was having some fun with uh, some friends, hot summer day on a uh, lake in local or rural Minnesota, uh, Green Lake and Spicer. And uh, I, I made a few uh, foolish mistakes with consuming alcohol underage. And, uh, Which we all have, have done. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, just we were throwing a football around, and it was a nice day, and I decided to run down the dock and dove into the lake, and uh, the lake was shallow. The dock was pretty high up off the water. It was a it was a hot, dry summer, so the water was pretty shallow, um, only two feet deep, and I hit the bottom full force, top of my head, and shattered my fifth cervical vertebrae, uh, broke my collarbone and a few ribs, dislocated a shoulder, and wow. uh, was floating upside down, or face down in the water. For, it felt like an eternity, but it was only probably a few seconds before my friend. You didn't lose consciousness. No, no, I stayed awake. Which, but you couldn't move. Good and good and bad, I guess. Yeah. You couldn't move though. No, no, I couldn't move. Uh, spi- so spinal shock initially hit, and so I couldn't move anything. My upper, my upper arms, my lower legs, nothing. So, um, yeah, I I laid there face down, just trying to hold my breath, and then uh, I could hear my friends coming down the dock. I could hear the dock rumbling through the water, so I knew. I knew I only had to, to wait a few more seconds, and then they flipped me over, and I told them I couldn't move anything. Uh, they called for help. Luckily, there was a, param- a paramedic just right next door vacationing at the cabin next to us, so he heard the call through his uh, his pager, and so he ran over. So it was really only maybe a couple minutes before there was medical care on, on site, so I actually got really lucky in that way. Yeah, well, there's really not much they could do at that point other than and try to keep you from damaging your spinal cord further, yeah, but it yeah, sounds right. like uh, it had been pretty severely damaged it with the accident. Yeah, so uh, I suffered a fifth cervical vertebrae, Asia B, so I have sensory function below my injury, but no motor function, so I can't, I'm a motor complete quadriplegic, so I can't move my hands or uh, some of the muscles in my uh, in my arms. Uh, trunk instability and then lower leg paralysis or leg paralysis. Wow. How long did it take from when you went then to the hospital to, okay, now so you're into your life? Yeah. <laughs> your uh, life. The, the ambulance came, picked me up at the dock and uh, transported me to an open field area where a helicopter transported me then to uh, St. Cloud Hospital. And I underwent uh, s- spinal traction where they hang weights off. They screw uh, cables into your head, hang wakes off the bed yep. to uh, stretch your, your spinal column back out. I was in spinal traction for two days, and then I underwent surgery, uh, spinal fusion of my fourth, fifth, and sixth cervical vertebrae. Mm-hmm. That's that's so that you can stabilize the spine. Yeah. So it, it it's the, the cord's not going to uh, get no, any so, better. It's so not to repair the cord, right. but it's to stabilize the spine. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, I mean, the damage had been done. They did try a few interventions to try to decrease the amount of swelling. I was given corticosteroids, but uh, from, from that point on, it's pretty much just wait and hope and try to do therapy and see what you can regain based on just conventional physical therapy. So... I was in St. Cloud for two weeks in the acute rehab setting, and then I was transported by ambulance to uh, Sister Kenny, Abbott Northwestern Hospital. Oh, yeah. I was there um, for two and a half to three months with a halo, so full uh, full neck brace system. And then I, from there, I went to Courage Center mm-hmm. in Golden Valley, Minnesota, and I was in an inpatient center there for another 10 months, or no, eight, sorry, eight months, so 10 months total. And then I transitioned back home for two months and then went to college in Southwest Minnesota State. So you were alway, 
already heading off in a direction of medicine. So uh, you were going to study biology up at Moorhead. You had that plan. Mm -hmm. And then you decided to to actually continue that direction but pursue a life in of medicine. Yeah, so um, throughout the whole rehab setting, I had a lot of questions for my doctors, as you would expect. <laughs> uh, a lot of them tried to give me some straightforward answers and also just basically told me that uh, there's really no cure and we don't really know how to fix this, which was extremely frustrating, but it also sparked a, a bit of curiosity in my mind of um, why the spinal cord can't be manipulated to try to regain some function. And, and uh, why it doesn't repair itself, why right, it doesn't right, grow back together. Right. Yeah, exactly. And so from, from that, uh, I really headed down the path of, if nobody else knows, there's gotta be careers out there in looking at this. So research career interests me because I'm interested in this field. And you're motivated. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Especially motivated. <laughs> yeah. And so it, uh, it's kind of funny. I, I put that kind of to the back of my mind when I went to college. I, I wanted to go into biology, but it, um, my therapist had told me maybe you should pursue a, like a, a doctorate in research when I was in my rehab. And I thought, man, that's a lot of school. Like, I don't ever want to go to that <laughs> much school. I didn't like school that much. And uh, so I kind of put it to the back of my mind. And then my I think it was the end of my junior year. I attended a, a foundation event. The Peter Morton to cure, sp uh, to cure Paralysis Foundation had an event in Minneapolis, and uh, Dr. Anthony Windebank from Mayo presented there oh, on yeah. spinal cord research. Mm -hmm. And I attended it just, my mom wanted to go, and I was like, sure, let's check this out. So my, my girlfriend, now my wife, and my mom and I went and uh, attended this event, and I got to talking with Tony, and um, I just was really interested in what they were doing, and he's an incredible person. Like he's very, very warm, very friendly to talk to. Got back to college, sent him a few emails, and he said, "Like, why don't you kind of come come to Mayo for a year and try to do some research and see what you think about the field?" And I just fell in love with it from that point on. I applied to a PhD program here, and things went from there. So, what are you working on now? So now we're working on. We have, we have a couple different projects going on within uh, Kendall Lee's Neural Engineering Lab and then also Kristen Zhao, who directs the art lab through, PM and, uh, through physical medicine and rehab. So this collaborative project, we're working with uh, Reggie Edgerton out of UCLA to, to implant electrical stimulators on the spinal cords of people with paralysis and to try to, uh, try to enable some functions that they've lost due to their spinal cord injury. Yeah, we recently had Dr. Zhao and Dr. Lee on telling us about yeah, that. Yeah, so, yeah, it, so you're part of that team. Yeah, it's really exciting work that we're doing. Uh, we've had one patient show some significant gains with stimulation. Uh, we're continuing the trial. And then we also, uh, within Kendall Lee's lab, um, working with another investigator, Igor Lavrov, we have some really exciting animal work going on as well. So preclinical, trying to understand how epidural stimulation is working in these patients. We have to go back into the lab and try to investigate this in uh, preclinical models to to really nail down how this therapy can be optimized. Gosh, there's hope, isn't there? I mean, you gotta be really excited about that. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> I'm, I, the, the funnest part about it for me is not like the selfish aspect of, well, this could help me down the road, but just seeing the gains that it makes in our current patients, is it's really fun. It's been 12 years since your accident. So yeah, what's it was, life uh, It was like August now? 2005, so almost 12 years, yeah. yeah. Uh, life is crazy. With work, it's fun, and then uh, my wife and I, we have two kids. Zoe is five. Reichen is going to be two in June. Oh, boy. Um, so, yeah, a boy and a girl. And <laughs> so things are fun and crazy at work, and then I get home, and they're even crazier. Wow. It's wild. Well, yeah. I'm wonderful, and we're so happy for you. And keep up the good work because it, it's nothing short of, of exciting. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. S from spinal cord injury to Ph.D. to Mayo Clinic researcher, Dr. Peter Grand. Thanks so much for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me.